welcome to my channel my name is Martine and if you are new here I do videos on Vedic astrology mainly but also with some tropical insights and I focus on both relationship and natal astrology and if you like this video and you would like to hear more content from me please like subscribe hit the notifications bell to see when I will post a new video and also if you're interested in a personal consultation I do consultations on a wide variety of topics please check out the video description I will leave my contact information there thank you and also I have recently started a tarot channel. If you're interested in tarot, please be free to check it out, maybe subscribe. Um, I'm going to link it in the video description as well as in the comment section. And also, if you're interested in finding out more on how to get a tarot reading from me, I can also uh, you can also contact me at the email address in the video description. And I can also send you some feedbacks that I have gotten so far from clients as well as sample readings and a pricing list. Okay, so thank you. And today's video is going to be on another requested topic and namely it is the topic of what tends to make a person unfaithful. Um, you know, this is going to be basically free speech, like, I mean, as in not scripted. Um, on based on just observations that I have come across throughout many years of reading charts and um, the first thing that I can say I'm just gonna get straight into it with respect to people who tend to be unfaithful well first as an introduction as usual I have to say that there are potentially several different reasons why people can be unfaithful or why people will have multiple relations okay so people who let's say will go through a phase when they are more promiscuous more libertine or <clears throat> um people who just seem to jump around from one relationship to another quite uh frequently you know there's usually some common configurations some common reasons why this happens and um, the first and foremost reason that i can mention with respect to why a person will not necessarily tend to be unfaithful but with respect to people who are just not happy in relationships um, is the topic of venus and jupiter um, and their dignity with respect to the spouse archetype. So if you have also, I'm gonna link these videos in the description. I have done these two videos a while ago. One where I talked about Venus as the wife archetype in a man's chart. And another one where I talked about Jupiter as the husband archetype in a woman's chart. And um, basically there's a, a kind of dignity that is, um, you know, how should I put it, assessed based on the sign placement and also um, aspects that Venus and Jupiter um, receive in a man's chart and a woman's chart respectively and exactly how this shows the degree of satisfaction in the marital life or with respect to partnerships, romantic partnerships in general, especially long-term partnerships because Venus is the wife archetype and the Mars, uh, sorry, Jupiter is the husband archetype. To a lesser degree, Mars can be the boyfriend archetype for a woman, okay, but I won't get into that right now. This is mainly about Venus and Jupiter and what I have seen is, like I also mentioned in those videos, when these planets are really afflicted or like they're in a bad dignity with respect to the spouse archetype meaning they show that this person for some usually karmic reason will suffer a lot of disappointments in relationships or like they will just come across partners who for one reason or another will not meet their needs or um, will just not make them happy will not really fulfill the role of the spouse in their lives properly um, and what happens is that this makes a person understandably dissatisfied and they will tend to, you know, either cheat. Sometimes it is possible that they will resort to cheating, um, but also it can just show that these people will tend to jump around from one relationship to another 
hoping that, you know, the next relationship will be better than the previous, which is a mistake, like I also mentioned in those videos. <laughs> Um, because it is a karmic thing and in order to solve these things there are um, separate remedies for remedies quote-unquote for women and men and how to solve their damaged Venus or uh, Jupiter situation okay and that technically can improve their satisfaction in relationships and now Jupiter is basically in the worst positions um, and once again with these you I would say you have to look mainly at the D1 and to a lesser extent the D7 and the D9 charts as well okay uh, meaning you have to look at the Jupiter situation for women and the Venus situation for men in these three charts um, once again, each of them stand for something else, but what I have seen especially is in, in the D1 and um, actually especially in the D9, for instance, if in the D9 uh, these planets are trashed, it tends to show infidelity or like the person might tend to stray because again, the D9 is the chart of marriage. And when Jupiter is debilitated or in a bad position, uh, again, this is not actual debilitation, okay, of the planet. That's something else. This is debilitation based on um, whether these planets are able to fulfill the spouse role in the person's life. That's it's a it's a relationship focused type of debilitation, okay. Um, so if Jupiter is debilitated, let's say in the D9, it tends to show that the husband for a woman does not fulfill, does not support her destiny, her ultimate development spiritually. Um, so let's say, for instance, if this is a career woman who has worked hard for everything and she's really determined to be successful, she will attract men who um, either are actively against her career fulfillment or just do not support her at all maybe they do not understand her at all with respect to her ambitions um and this makes a woman of course very unhappy very frustrated you know this was one example of course it could be the other way around it could be that a woman who wants to be a stay-at-home mother just doesn't find a man who will offer her the support and the, um, I don't know, all the conditions that she needs in a relationship, in a marriage, for her to be happy and fulfilled. So if this happens, there will be a tendency to unfaithfulness and there will definitely be a tendency to want to change relationships because the person thinks there's something better around the corner, okay? Um, if it happens in the D7, it's probably the worst, especially, well, actually for both men and women in the D7, because the D7 shows what you feel you can gain from your spouse. Like, is the spouse, um, adding some important, um, let's say value to your existence? Is the spouse, let's say, are you doing things now because of your spouse or because of your long-term romantic partner? Are you doing things that you ha would have otherwise not done? You know, that is the question. And if Jupiter is in a bad position in the D7, it shows that basically you're going to feel like this guy doesn't really bring much to the table. Um, irrespective of what it may have seemed like he would bring to the table when you started dating. You see what I'm saying? Um, and also what it can also show is that the spouse, the, the husband you know, will not help you much with children. So if you have children as a woman, um, he maybe will be an absent father. You know, even if he, let's say, um, provides for you financially, he will really not help you. He will not support you in raising the children. So you will feel tired and frustrated all the time. And you feel like you have no emotional understanding and no support. And again, this will breed dissatisfaction. Um, last but not least, if Jupiter is debilitated in the D1 chart, it will show generally in life that you feel like the partners you attract, the long-term romantic partners, are not much support to you. 
uh, depending on the level of debilitation, you know, it could be like a really bad, a really trashed Jupiter, uh, which can really show that you tend to attract a lot of deadbeats, you know, um, men who really just don't bring much, do not enrich your life much. Um, or they don't really like you for who you are. That's another thing. With a debilitated Jupiter, women can attract men who are shallow, who don't really see them for their spiritual values. Um, so, and again, basically, this will breed dissatisfaction. Jupiter is debilitated in the signs ruled by Venus and by Mercury. So, Taurus, Libra, Gemini, um, Virgo... <clears throat> And uh, I'm pretty sure that I am missing some. I think, yeah, Capricorn. And uh, let me think. I think there's one as well. There is maybe one other that I am missing. Um, hmm, Capricorn and something else. I forget right now. But it's all in that video that I made, the long, the long one. Um, yeah, but basically in these signs, it basically means that the husband archetype in your chart, in your horoscope, depending on, again, which chart it's in, which divisional chart, um, is just not living up to his side of the deal. That's basically what it means. But the mistake is to think that you're, you can solve this problem by switching to a different partner. The remedy for a woman who has a bad Jupiter is to cultivate the qualities of Jupiter within her own life. And I know this sounds like a cliche, like I also mentioned in that video, but the, the remedy is to cultivate joy and happiness within yourself and also higher spiritual values, the things that Jupiter stands for. You know, also sense of wonderment, sense of joy in life, adventure, optimism, faith, and all those things. And the more you learn to love yourself and to be happy with life on your own, the more likely it is that you can attract a worthy partner, a, a partner who, um, you know, sees you for who you are and accepts you for who you are and is actually going to support you. For men, um, it's... <laughs> It, there are far less placements where Venus is debilitated, which is interesting in itself. Uh, Venus is debilitated in Cancer, Leo, and Virgo. And each of these are going to take on different nuances. Again, I went in depth in those videos that I'm going to be linking in the video description. Um, and in a man's chart, again, it shows that the wife is going to be unsupportive one way or another. Something is going to be dissatisfying, you know, about the wife. Again, in the D1, it shows that this wife uh, generally is not particularly supportive of the man or he feels like she's not supportive, okay? It could be that she's trying to be supportive, but he doesn't really... Um, he doesn't really feel supported, okay? Or the kind of support that she gives is not according to his expectations or what he needs in order to feel supported in life um, and loved and all that. And also Venus being sensuality and all that, there could be frustrations with respect to getting their needs met with respect to intimacy and romance in the relationship as well. Um, and, uh, yeah, again, in the D7, it's the worst if the, if Venus is debilitated in the D7, because that means that he will feel the wife really doesn't bring much, like, doesn't bring much quality to his existence, or, like, doesn't really bring much to the table, um, you know, or, you know, doesn't, like, the wife doesn't bring anything that he wouldn't have gotten on his own, basically. Um, and also, again, it can show a, a, a woman who is not a good mother figure or a woman who does, maybe doesn't even want to give him children, despite the fact that he wants children. Um, or, you know, a woman that he cannot really co-create anything with, not, nothing substantial with, you know. And uh, if it if Venus is debilitated and the Navamsha, again, shows a woman who does not support his higher spiritual destiny and his uh, fulfillment. Um, and again, the remedy for this, even though the tendency will be for men who have, and I've seen this especially for men where they have debilitated Venus, especially in the D1 chart, um, and they tend to really jump around from one relationship to another, or they tend to be unfaithful sometimes. You know, they're always kind of like, having this grass is greener on the other side kind of mentality. 
And again, the remedy for this is that they need to be responsible. They need to, and actually, basically, the worst thing that they can do is to have a promiscuous lifestyle where they are jumping around from one uh, relationship to another because the theory is that if a man has a debilitated Venus, it's because in a past life he has not been responsible with his actions. Like, for instance, I don't know, he promised marriage to a young woman and then left her at the altar or something like that. Um, it's a karmic thing, basically. So, because the theory is that the wife is kind of like a reward, quote-unquote, for the man for past life deeds or for his valor and for his, um, um, I don't know, his efforts, let's say, you know, throughout many lifetimes. So, if it's debilitated, it shows that he hasn't really lived up to um to his uh, potential let me put it like that with respect to how responsible how fair how dignified he should have been etc okay and yes the remedy for this is that he needs to be as responsible as possible and not give in to shallow temptation okay and um let me see yeah so these are the two most important things another thing that contributes to infidelity is you want to look for whether a person is a monglic or not. Um, monglic is this term that basically is given to people who have Mars in certain houses. Again, according to different theories, you're supposed to either only look at this in the D1 chart or you are supposed to look at it in the D7 and the D9 as well. Um, I would say, to some extent, you want to look at the at the all the three charts and where Mars is sitting, but especially in the D1 chart, I would say. Um, and if you see that a person is a Monglic, so Monglic means that you have Mars in either the 12th, the 1st, the 4th, the 7th, or the 8th houses. And if you have this in either the D1 or the D9 especially, this shows people that a person who has a very high need for sexual intimacy, uh, physical intimacy, okay? So basically, of course, this doesn't, again, necessarily mean that the person will be unfaithful, but the theory is, according to ancient theories, that Mongolics should only marry other Mongolics because they have a higher, you know, sex drive, so they need a person who can keep up with them. Um, and what happens is that if they don't get that, they have a partner who is not as, you know, physically passionate as they are, they can tend to, you know, stray, understandably, right? Um, because they're not getting their needs met. So that's something, that is definitely something that you know, can breed um, risk of infidelity. But I would say probably not the strongest thing, okay? Another thing you want to look at is Rahu. Like, you want to look at Rahu, especially in a man's chart, when Rahu is with Venus, especially in certain signs and certain nakshatras and also certain houses, um... It tends to show a man who kind of is a womanizer, you know, because Venus represents women, Rahu represents even obsessions, you know, it represents very strong desires. Um, and also, they, you know, Venus with Rahu um, tends to make men really be attracted to good looking women, oftentimes exotic women as well, because usually, well, Venus conjunct Rahu is one of the potential configurations that you can have for a foreign spouse in a man's chart, right? In a straight man's chart, especially. Um, once again, when, if you're talking about non-straight relationships, you have to look for which is your dominant energy, okay? So if you identify more as masculine, more likely the spouse archetype will be shown by Venus. And so... <laughs> Yeah, Rahu with Venus tends to make men uh tends to make men kind of womanizers. But to be honest, a strong Rahu placement, I would say conjunction to any planet almost, unless unless it's Saturn, maybe. Uh, but conjunction to even the sun can tend to make men um not not necessarily directly womanizers, but for instance, when it's conjunct the sun, it can make a person narcissistic, egomaniacal, you know. Um, and since in today's world, right, part of 
showing that you have a high status and and uh, you're the big tough man is also having a lot of girlfriends right so it can make a man you know like that kind of be chasing skirt in the idea that he might get a better girlfriend or wife that will make him look good in front of the boys um but generally especially when rahu is with venus it will tend to show men who really like women maybe more than you would imagine so it's not like written on the face but and, and again it really depends with rahu on the nakshatra like so so if you see a man having this conjunction in rohini for instance i would say it's very unlikely that this person wouldn't be promiscuous at some point in his life because Rahu and Rohini becomes very materialistic, very focused on sensual pleasures, etc. Um, so, <clears throat> yeah. <laughs> or, um, let me think, also in Swati Nakshatra and Scorpio in general. So there are certain placements that can can be stronger than others if this is in let's say i don't know pisces to a lesser degree i would not necessarily say that this guy's gonna be super promiscuous especially not if it's in uttara bhadrapada maybe in revati a little bit um <laughs> but yeah so also also for a man if mars is with rahu um, this can show that he is kind of a conqueror when it comes to his sexuality. Because Mars is sexuality, especially the male sexuality, like the proactive side of a person's sexuality, because both women and men have a Mars energy. Um, so it's the part of you that is kind of like the hunter, the one that goes after what it wants. And especially for men, this is the part that they identify with the most. And when they have this Mars with Rahu conjunction, they tend to have this kind of like need to constantly conquer more, more, more. And of course, this could also translate into how, into their approach to physical intimacy as well. Okay, so it can make a man kind of a philanderer. Um, let me think, what else? <clears throat> also... Rahu in the fifth house can make a man kind of promiscuous because the fifth house is about sensuality, pleasure. Uh, can Actually, this is true for both men and women, you know, the fifth house. Um, I've heard some cases where Rahu in the seventh house makes people promiscuous, but I would not necessarily say that. It, it really, with the seventh house, it depends a lot on the signs and nakshatras that are involved. And um, in the twelfth house as well can definitely show that this person might have affairs, especially if you see Rahu with Venus or Mars or both in the 12th house of a horoscope, especially the D1 chart. Um, if you see this, it will tend to show a person who will tend to have secret affairs because the 12th house is the house of basically secrecy, you know? And also it's the house connected to called bedroom pleasures, but that's also because it's associated with things that happen, you know, hidden from view, so to speak. For instance, Bruce Lee, I read this, like, ha was a famous example with, Mar I think, Mars Venus in the 12th house, and he had countless affairs, according to people who documented his life. And that's another thing. Like, so if you see a person who has mars or venus or both in the 12th house in general without rahu um it can show a person who will tend to be a bit of a philanderer um but again none of these things are set in stone and usually if you see a person who's like a chronic cheater or something they will probably have multiple aspects that point towards this so it's not like everyone who has these placements like if you have rahu with venus that you are going to be a cheater um, it depends on a lot of things, of course. Um, but yeah, these are some some of the general things that I have noticed. Also, uh, I, I don't know. I, I, yeah, I think I did mention this. So Venus with Mars, a person who has a lot of Venus, a lot of Mars. These people will tend to be more romantic, more, more you know, again, inclined towards physical intimacy, more interested in these things. And um, so even a Venus Mars conjunction already in itself can show a person who is just very driven by love and romance and lust and all this stuff. Okay, but it can also 
show a person who is just very artistic, not necessarily a person who focuses their energy towards, um, you know, having a lot of romantic affairs. Um, and also, another thing that I can add is, again, I have to... <laughs> I have to uh, attach to Rahu uh, here because I've seen it where Rahu is, especially in the, either actually either in the seventh or in the first house of the Navamsha, it tends to show people who will have some level of dissatisfaction connected to the married life. And because of this, but I would say especially when Rahu is in the Navamsha itself, in the ascendant of the Navamsha, tends to show a person who will always have some level of dissatisfaction with respect to relationships. Like they will always want more or something. Like they're not happy with what they have. And this is also um, something talked about with respect to having Rahu in the seventh house of the D1 chart that it tends to bring some kind of chronic dissatisfaction with respect to relationships, marriage, long-term partnerships, and all this stuff, okay? So that in itself can also, you know, make a person more inclined to be unfaithful or to have multiple relationships. Another thing that I have read, but to be honest, have not really researched particularly in particular myself so I have read this in multiple sources but I don't know to which extent it is true that um, people who have Gemini um, I think um, if yeah if they have their swa so the sign that the Atmakaraka sits in in the Navamsha if it is Gemini that they will have two marriages or multiple relationships but I'm not sure if this is true Okay, um, this is a theory though. So yeah, these are some things that, um, you know, I have noticed over the years. Maybe there are a lot more. So I don't know, I might make a part two to this. But yeah, this is being it. And if you have enjoyed it, do not forget to like, subscribe, and hit the notifications bell to see when I will post a new video. Okay, thank you. Thank you.